Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave and waking up for a very early Saturday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. Another very cold day, but you know it's getting quite warm. And Bitcoin has done absolutely nothing, but we actually do have quite a few things, quite a few new things to, to discuss during this uh, video. As Willy Woo, the man behind the MBT ratio, has actually released uh, quite a few more uh, economic models of Bitcoin, which I am going really, really deep into, and I'm going to be presenting them during a video like this. So again, we'll also be looking at uh, probably some traditional markets and perhaps even some gold to kind of switch things up a little bit. So let's get into the live scene right now. As always, wish you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest. Well, whether you're waking up for a nice little early morning with me over here in Helsinki in the European time zone, or you're coming back from a very late night in the Western Hemisphere, maybe you're American and, uh, and having all sorts of fun dancing on tables and all that good stuff. Anyways, Bitcoin, let's just wrap them up really, really quick. Uh, overall, this actually is a good setup right here. To be quite to be quite uh, serious on the daily, we do have that ten simple cross on the upside of the yellow twenty one exponential, and you do see that support is you know is being had off of it. Uh, each and every time that Bitcoin actually tries to test this area, it is you know it is buoyed back up. So the way that I look at this is that um, you know yes I am you know I, I do I do stick to my guns as long as uh, as long as Bitcoin's below eight, uh, th what is it thirty six hundred, I will stay short. But the second that it gets back above there, um, I have no interest in uh, in holding that short now. We do have also our RSI bouncing off of essentially what I consider a test of the exponential right here and also the neutral zone as well. Technically, yes, there is a little bit of hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point, perhaps even better between this point and this point as the RSI makes higher highs. Um, but the price actually makes lower highs. This is probably better seen on a two day dildo time frame, which looks pretty nasty. I mean, if I go here to the two day dildo time frame, actually things I, I would really change my opinion. I, I'd, I'd really change my tune as uh, as long as we're below that 21 exponential, which is where, you know, 3604. Uh, this is overall, you know, it, it, it looks like a lot of indecision. We have, you know, reject one, reject two, reject three. And now so far, we where do we sell off of basically the test of the 21 exponential? That is so much indecision. Usually when I see a lot of indecision, decision, the overall um, trend in the market takes over and that would be likely to the downside. So I don't want to make it sound like it's uh, it's all rosy. Um it's all rose co colored goggles right now. It's not. I would be very hesitant about this because also daily stokes have crossed down and not ha not only have daily stokes crossed down, but they have found resistance in the same area that they've been finding resistance in to call the tops for the last. Uh, what is it? I mean, ever since September, going all the way back over here. Um, and turning right down around this area, also getting kicked out of the bullish control zone and gaining momentum to the downside. That is, you know, that is a big deal to me. The last time that it actually hit this trend line, that was, you know, your set, your December highs, sorry, December highs on uh, the 25th, 26th, 27th, something like that. And then we once again got around this range and turning down right as it's hit. So that tells me that it is being played off of. Let's go to the 12 hours. There's actually something even more important to be aware of here, funnily enough, on a lower time frame. But here's the thing with the Stokes, we actually do have that same reason resistance trend line or what would appear to be the same resistance trend line but gap but grabbing all of the highs of our current consolidation we have this guy right here to begin it uh, you know again the the late December and what's up uh, good to meet you Tom as Tom as I hope I'm saying that right man good to have you in here man good to meet you and pleasure to uh, pleasure to have you in the cave and uh, then you had this nice this nice little spike over here early January eight eight nine um, turning down calling that top and once again we've hit this area and actually straight nose dive down so just to put in perspective those areas were this area here um, that high at 41 50 this high at 40 50 and then well we've once again done it you know in this area so when I look at this, yes, I am overall bearish. I'm going to be bearish in a bearish market. I mean, that's just, you know, that's just the nature of, of market cycles, right? And uh, and we are in an overall consolidation phase, as you can see right here. I, again, I, I don't really feel the need to redraw all of these uh, all of these trend lines. Nothing's changed in literally, you know, literally a couple months, really. Um, but uh, but you can see very easily that all of this is to be considered as consolidation. I do not look at this as a bull flag. I do not look at this as, you know, I do not look at this as really anything other than it's not. And that is just a triangular consolidation, whether it's a pennant or a descending triangle, I think is kind of irrelevant. Both are typically bearishly resolved patterns. Doesn't mean they're always going to be resolved to the downside, but an overall bear market playing a bearish pattern, you know, to me, that is typically worth it. So looking at this area, looking at the volume signature, looking at um, we can bring up the historical volatility bank as well. Well, which is actually show, showing the exact same thing. I mean, look at this guy right here. It is, you know, we're basically in the exact same read coming all the way down, all the way down. And let's go to a daily. It actually is, it's actually a little bit better on a daily. Um, 
you know, our last spike to meet the moving average on this guy was, well, that was Friday. So again, telling us that this is all just to be really considered as a consolidation coming off of a major downtrend in the form of, you know, a triangle, which is likely to break onto the downside. It can still take its time, though. I mean, look at this. There's plenty of time for this guy to fill out as uh, when this indicator typically gets around like the, you know, less than 0.1, which is actually getting pretty damn close to right now. Uh, that's when big moves can typically happen. Uh, the last time that we really got, you know, below that area was uh, was in October. Over. In fact, we should. Well, we can't really use it on uh, on this. We we got to go to an exchange with more history. Yeah, there we go. Bitstamp will do it. And uh, the last time that we really got below that area was you know in October, you know uh, November when <laughs> you probably remember that. Um, and then the times before that, you know, were some major uh, were some major moves as well. Doesn't tell you which direction it's going to move, but it does tell you that a major move is extremely likely to happen. Just like it, you just like it told you that this is extremely unlikely to be your ultimate low of the market cycle right here at the 3150 uh, current low that we have, because you know historic volatility rank did not get up that all you know that high. Um, <clears throat> especially historically speaking, when this thing has been so damn accurate on major inflection points in the market. It does tell it, it. It does tell you that, uh, in the way that I read it, that this is consolidation again in confluence with the overall price structure, in confluence with the volume signature, signature in confluence with the way that our stokes are acting. Basically, you know, grabbing all the highs at those, you know, at, at those inflection points. So I do want to get that that out there. Of course, if you're not familiar with the historical volatility rank, it's basically it's basically a mean reverting indicator that tells you when price action is extremely far away from like you know the standard deviations of the mean of price returns over a period of time, which basically means that a super high uh, a super high vault, uh, historical volatility rank would imply that we're at a, you know, probably a major high or major low and a very, 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 very low historical volatility rank lets us know that we're probably going to be moving in a breakout or breakdown relatively soon. So again, as you can see, this thing did not get that high, even on our current low. Um, in comparison to where I do want to see it when it's that, when it does call all the, you know, it, it calls tops, it calls bottoms very, very well very very well you can see that uh, if you just back test it it'll get just about every single one that you could uh, uh every single one that you can, could design and the fact that we did not even really tick up into that one region is concerning if you are if you are in the camp if you are in the bullish camp saying that the lows are in i don't believe that the lows are in i think that bitcoin could certainly pump um but to put in perspective bitcoin could literally pump all the way up to the 200 exponential moving average and still not change anything and that's all the way at 4100 uh, a little bit above 4100 that purple moving average right here that i'm currently pointing towards so yeah i mean it just becomes even more more visually apparent on the weekly the volume signature here but uh my point is is that you know if bitcoin did rally all the way up there nothing would change from the macro perspective i'm not saying that bitcoin is going to rally up there of course if you know to inside a discussion like that we'd have to make an assumption that basically the current resistance that we've been looking at at the uh, at the 3650 3700 range is going to break to the upside um i am i'm pretty agnostic right here i mean i'm going to be bearish in, a, in an overall bearish market so i I, you know, I'm, I'm going to naturally not really be going towards that. But what I can say is that uh, if it does happen, then I wouldn't want to be having any shorts because, yes, there is a resistance at 3850, 3900. But my opinion is that you probably do come over and test that area, um, maybe even get a wick above. But I, I'm actually not really leaning towards that happening. The reason why I'm not leaning towards that happening is because we have something of even greater importance on a higher time from the monthly, which is is that green 55 exponential which is actually coming in where 3670 3669 essentially which is a great number and that would you know basically be that resistance trend line that we just looked at governing our lower highs throughout this whole consolidation period so i should actually go back and show it just really quick but you know just to to, to show the relevancy of it but basically this guy coming all the way back over here you know that's been going on a lower highs ever since bitcoin had this major major tumble uh since uh late november going all the way over here we actually did test it on uh friday last friday not not this past friday and uh and you can see that this guy has been holding this one in and it also does match up with that monthly 55 exponential which bitcoin broke for the first time in its in its uh in its history um last month in january and with this month coming back up and testing it and so far rejecting from it or at least what i consider rejection so far uh this will have a chance both open and close below this moving average which would be confirmed you know considered a confirmed kill of that moving average as far as i'm concerned which would likely incite a test to the next one 
or, 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 or the next bot algo target's likely, likely going to be somewhere down around here, right around 2450, 2500-ish area. Um, of course, this is obviously going to take some time. This is, you know, this is done on a monthly dollar time frame. I don't want to make this sound like this is happening tomorrow. It's not. It's probably not. You know, again, you can't say, you can't say like super specific things uh, when it comes to technical analysis because, well, it just it can't be done. But what I can say is that uh, as long as Bitcoin is, if, if Bitcoin does close below this green 25 exponential moving average, which again, remind you, is 3669, um, um, that will lead to a, a tumbling effect, an avalanche of effect where I would, where this would be confirmed as consolidation in a monthly total time frame. We would have lost the green 55 exponential. We would likely have either the 10 simple and the 21 exponential hinting at across the downside or actually crossing the downside. And that's going to intensify the bot algo selling. That's going to likely be the emphasis for sending this guy down around to the mid to low 2000s, I'd imagine. So again, um, that would be the next big move that I'm looking for. Of course, on lower time frame, Frames. What I'd also be comfortable with saying is that, you know, um, on sorry, we'll, we'll go through like the very low time frames in a second. But on uh, on lower time frames, the obvious uh, area to hold up in as far as I'm concerned is 3350. Um, as long as Bitcoin's above 3350, this is likely just still consolidating. But the second that it actually breaks 3350, I do believe that that will initiate that run. Technically, yes, you do have a support at 3250. And then, you know, you could make the argument for your prior low at 3150 because people are going to be buying there just by, you know, just naturally speaking. But as far as the higher time frames go and, you know, bringing it all together, putting on the uh, uh putting on the jesus christ there we go putting on the weekly we do see that if and if we bring on the volume uh profile we do see that there is basically nothing after that 3350 area it's very 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 low market acceptance all the way down to you know mid mid 2000s essentially very similar to what bitcoin had at the 6000 level all the way all the way over to you know high 3000s obviously a little bit more a little bit more exaggerated here but overall uh very similar very very similar and likely to get a very similar effect uh not only that but if we actually do put Put on my drawing tools we have a lot of things that agree with that mid to low 2000s area we have the 886 Fibonacci retracement kind of meeting up with that nice high value node that is where bitcoin did bottom out in 2014 just by the way we do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area and we do have the and, and we do have what else do we have uh we had the blx index showing that the um showing that the 89 exponential is coming in around that 24 2500 area right then we also have the weekly uh 377 exponential coming in actually a little bit higher around 2600 so anywhere in that area does start to sound pretty damn good to me also you likely will have a measure move off this formation actually we can just very quickly put it in right here but basically what i'm talking about is you know at at, at best it's a bear pennant at worst it's a at, at worst it's a, it's a descending triangle that has a lot more time to really fill out but let's actually just bring this off do this out over here and get this one down and we can make a measure move off this baby and where's that measure move going to likely be coming in around well you already fucking know man you already fucking know is it going to perhaps line up with everything else that we just went been speaking about that would be crazy it's like technical analysis sometimes it actually works it's crazy 2550 um so yeah you know I, I i am looking for some probably like that uh if bitcoin even does break out to the upside i think it would just be it would just be a, another you know another failed breakout most likely but probably you know again don't want to really be short if bitcoin's going to go to 4000 though which is my opinion you know if bitcoin breaks above 30 uh, 3650 3700 probably you're probably going to have one of those quick moves to around 4,000, I'd imagine. Uh, this this ascending triangle would have an apex on uh, March 21st. However, you could also represent this as a bear pennant, which would have an apex basically in early March. So again, you know, this this does have a little bit more space to fill this guy out. Typically, these things do break when they're you know relatively relatively full, meaning you know 69, 75 percent, three quarters full is is kind of the general rule, right? Then they can that uh, then they become extremely likely to burst. And this one is, I'd say it's probably around there. Um, I think we could maybe even, could we could we make a, a projection on this? Well, we could, but I don't want to do the maths right now. <laughs> Lazy as fuck. Um, but anyways, going on, going, on, going on over here to Bitcoin in the lower time frames, we should talk about this just really quick. Um, lower time frame oscillators are pointed up right now, to be, to be very clear. Four hour stokes, up. Two hour stokes, fresh cross up. Three hour stokes, fresh cross up. Six hour stokes, fresh or uh, cross it, crossing up. I wouldn't say fresh anymore. Eight hour stokes, fresh cross up. Nine hour stokes, up. Ten hour, up. It's only twelve daily. It's only the twelve hour and the daily that are that are situated down right now. Um, 
So, you know, it's, you know, if Bitcoin does put in some sideways around this area, uh, I'd imagine that this is, you know, this is the resistance area and that's the area to hold for the bears. Let's go check out GBDC, which actually had a pretty decent close yesterday, uh, closing above the yellow 21 exponential, by the way, um, on our on our daily time frame. Again, same sort of formation here, nice little descending triangle. Uh, could we have another run at this resistance here, which would probably put, you know, spot charts at, a, a, you know, low 3600s, I'd imagine. Um, yeah, very possible. And with the reaction that we had on Friday, I mean, that's that's kind of what I'd be looking for. Uh, weekly, weekly is interesting as well. Weekly did take out the 10 simple moon average, um, not a death sentence by any means, especially when you had a bullish engulfing to, to, to kind of lead into it. But again, too much indecision in this range is not good for anyone. However, it has closed. Well, yeah, yeah. So, so we closed above the 10 simple last week and then we were, then we failed to close above it again this week. So that's, that's actually kind of a bad sign. Uh, weekly Stokes will very likely be crossing the downside, uh, on next week's open, but we have to wait for that to actually tick on. Um, weekly RSI, not really giving us all that much. I mean, you could maybe make the argument that, that there's some hidden bearish divergence. I, I think that it'd be really like splitting hairs. Um, and then let's go look at the uh, the underlying market dynamics before we get into the more fun stuff. But uh, but thirty five and a half thousand open long, so we've gained we've gained another thousand uh, long since we last spoke yesterday, and we've actually gained quite a bit of shorts too. We've gained two thousand shorts. We've actually gained more you know more comparative shorts um, in that same amount of time frame. Two thousand shorts all the way up to twenty four thousand open shorts. Three and a, three and a third of these are hedged, so we really have a little under twenty one thousand open shorts. Still a great imbalance between the two, and longs are really starting to get into that area of of great concern as. Far far as I'm concerned, uh, this 35, uh, 3550 area here. Um, you know, anytime it gets above 33,000, I do look at this. Uh, people are going to call it, people are going to tell you that there's a fucking inverted head and shoulders here. Jesus Christ, man. That's going to, oh man, that's going to be a good one. Um, but uh, but anytime Bitcoin gets above this 33,000 open uh, longs mark, that typically does march, match up with major, major dumps. Now, it doesn't tell you the timing of it. The timing of it is typically had when it when it pops back down below this area. Uh, as you can see, it can it can spend like a month above above this area. And the more aggressive stances getting all the way to 40,000, we're currently about 5,000 away from that. Um, but it certainly is on my radar as something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> concerning uh, to say the least again when i look at bitcoin and i talk about bitcoin you know likely having new lows to put in that's kind of a big thing i mean it's it's more of a secondary thing but the fact that there's more longs and shorts uh, at this at, at this level of price point when Bitcoin is really just a few percentage points off of its longs I mean definitely you know what it's I mean we, we basically got uh, around about six percent off the lows before now we're about 14 percent I mean that's not that's you want to have that situation when you're like back above 6,000, not when you're here. Bitcoin is literally above the 35,000 open uh, long mark when it hasn't even taken out this resistance, the most preliminary resistance, which is not the most important one. The most important one, in my opinion, would probably be the weekly, the weekly 200 exponential. As long as Bitcoin's both opening and closing weekly totals below there, I, very, very bad. Very fucking bad. Um, it just is too much. Too many people on the bus. Too many people thinking the same thing. Too many people thinking that they've just been the genius who just bought the actual low. Bitcoin's never going low. I can hold it for the rest of my life, and I'm gonna double my one thousand dollars into two thousand dollars, and then, and then I went, and then I can retire early, or or, or whatever you know, whatever those types of uh, thinkers think. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. You know, <laughs> I shouldn't joke around about that because I I should probably try to understand their perspective rather than. Rather than just belittle it, um, but yeah, you know, uh, looking at these time frames, I'm I, I don't really have a strong opinion here, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I'm gonna be bearish in a bearish market, so that, that is my opinion. That is my position right now. I am still sh I'm still holding that short from 3619, uh, and I'll be holding that short as long as we're closing hourly dollars below 3600. Essentially, don't see any re really real reason to close it. But you will be hinting at a pretty damn good cross right here on your uh, on your exponentials on the next 12 hour tick. If this uh, if this fails to if this fails to come back down below about 30. 550. Um, now, of course, we did close last night below the 10 simple, you know, but nothing. We're really splitting hairs by looking at these sorts of things. Uh, let's go look at CMEs and then we'll get on to the more fun stuff. Uh, CMEs closing the day all the way at 3560. So this is very important to me because remember, CMEs are basically making the same thing. In fact, a little bit of a, a little bit of a more obvious ascending triangle as far as I'm concerned with an obvious support here at 3300 even um, and an apex coming in uh, late March. So that is what I believe is probably 
the right way to be uh, representing this uh, because CMEs do have a better feed for this, uh, or at least I do believe that they have. It, it just feels more accurate. It seems to play out a lot more on CMEs. You have that nice orderly drop off in volume telling that this that this is all consolidation. We do have our 12 hour stoke. This is 12 hour. Yeah, 12 hour stokes actually just freshly crossing down on the last tick. By the way, I think daily are not quite there just yet. Yeah, daily are still headed up, but look at where the dailies are. Dailies are right at the edge of the bullish control zone right here. And you can see that this has been governing the highs ever since October. I mean, this is, you know, going back four or five months now, uh, October, um, November, right before the major downfall. This was your this was your late December high. This was your early January high. And we're once again right around this range. So I'd imagine that if bears do want to uh, show their hand, it will be very soon. Uh, closing the day as a nice uh, as, as a very obvious rejection off this uh, horizontal resistance. I do think that, uh, you know, when looking at this, I do think that the next move is down. Um, yeah, you know, as long as you're above the 21 exponential, I don't, you know, I don't think that I, you, you don't want to be short from a more, from a traditional standpoint, you don't want to be short, but my opinion is certainly, is certainly down. Uh, and, but again, do I trade my opinion? Fuck no, I don't. Uh, if Bitcoin gets back above 3,600, I will gladly close some, uh, some shorts, but you know, it is also the weekend, right? It's Saturday. Saturday is notorious for what? Hunts, the little cunt hunts. So sorry that shouldn't say that on the interwebs, but you know what I mean in the most lovingly way. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's go. Okay, so now let's get into the fun stuff. So this is a little bit more long-term thinking. Again, I can give my own uh, my own views on why I do not believe that the Bitcoin low is in. Uh, definitely check out the playlist titled "Long-Term Analysis" as I'll go into with into it in much more detail. You know, over literally the course of an hour, and with examples and all that good stuff. And I'll probably upload another one tomorrow. But just kind of wrap it up very very quickly. The volume on the low is not consistent with the way that I want to see it uh, for Bitcoin major lows. The historical volatility rank, as we looked at, is not is also not consistent. The MBT signal also not signaling a low, which has been perfect, you know, every every single time in Bitcoin's history. The um, the time spent at the lows is not consistent with Bitcoin's, you know, with Bitcoin's prior mark cycles. The percentage bounce off the lows not also not good enough, and the return to the lows also very 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 uh, not good either. So again, and and within within about five percent returning to the lows, I think is much too close for comfort. Anyways, get on to this. And this is from Willy Woo, the maker of the MVT signal. And let's get on over here. So this is, we're going to look at something kind of experimental. And we're going to be looking at what he calls a delta market cap um, versus the realized cap versus the market cap versus the average cap. And as you can see here, there's some things of great interest. And maybe I should define these things first, right? Uh, should uh, where, where does he have his own def definitions? I want to put it in his own words so that I don't get it wrong. Um, but I mean, well, basically the delta cap is just a realized cap minus the minus the average cap. I, I think that we can probably figure that out. You know, market cap, very, very simple. That's what you see on CMC. Uh, realized cap, that's, you know, that's what's actually been realized. Average is just the average of that. And then the delta is the difference between the two. Uh, the two being the, uh, the mark, uh, I believe it was the market cap, or sorry, the realized cap and the average cap, yes. Okay, great. So let's get on over here. Um, and this is something that I think is incredible, incredibly interesting because with these new, uh, with, uh, with this new look, this does offer up new information. It does quite literally offer up new information because the historical accuracy of this thing as a as as a as a both a bottom and top collar has been perfect. To put it quite bluntly, it's been perfect. So let's go over what we're looking at right now. And basically, when we see when we see the realized cap approach the purple delta cap, that is typically when we do call March market tops. So I actually said it backwards. When the delta cap approaches the realized cap, that's when market tops are typically uh, typically called. We had it right here, highlighted by the red, right here right here, right here. And maybe maybe mark cycle top is the wrong word, but major top is is the right word, I, sh I should say, because this calling this guy right here, yes, it was a major top, um, but it was not a mark cycle top. Uh, the mark cycle top was this guy, as far as my opinion goes. Um, and as far as bottoms go, we get a little bit of a different read. It is when the delta cap approaches the average cap, right? And, the, and when they converge right here and right here, that actually does call a low. Now, you, now there is a contingency to this. As you can see over here, 
this calls more like when the bull market start starts this one calls the low and when the bull market starts but i would say you know if you want to be more, if you want to have a more conservative approach when looking at some, when looking at something like this i'd go with the you know i'd, I'd go with the former essentially saying okay well it's probably it's probably better at calling the the turnaround into a more bullish market you know after an actual capitulation event it's not going to call the ultimate low it's going to call like the turnaround to when momentum is being gained back to the upside is what i feel a little bit more confident with saying and as you can see the Average cap and the delta cap are nowhere near each other right now. So even if you know, even if you are looking at, um, even if you are looking at those two to kind of tell you when the low is in, they're so far apart from each other that it is a little bit out of question to be thinking that that that's kind of happened already. Like over here, they had already really converged massively on each other. Over here, they'd already con converged converged massively on each other. Over here, as you can see, it, they're nowhere near. They're nowhere near is the point. Now they are conf converging on each other, no doubt about that. They are actually, you know, coming up to each other, but they've been doing that for literally the last, you know, over a year now. So my point is, is that this can take some time. And, you know, I, I'd imagine if you do extrapolate these guys further, it's gonna probably be, you know, I, I would say probably not even until 2020. Um, let's let's check out, uh, do I wanna check out that? No, I don't really care about that. That's, I think that that's, that one's a little bit more bullshit. Um, yeah, I should mention this as well. He did also show this, the Delta cap basically calling the lows of the mark cycle. And you notice that we've actually hit it. We've actually hit it. Um, but even the maker himself, Willie Wu, uh, uh, does not believe that that's going to be the ultimate low. And you do see in 2012 actually an example of what can happen where you get a couple stabs at it in, in actually even lower. Uh, my The reason why I say that is because this guy, um, well, we should actually... We should actually just read it in his words, and I'll give my my opinion, or at the very least, uh, near bottoms, near the floor. But please see the caveats of this indicator and, um, now to have a more. Uh, oh, where's where's the caveats? Where where are they? There they are. Okay, uh, having touched uh, delta cap recently does does not employ a, glo a global bottom. One must remember that delta cap is currently sloping down and will continue to do for se for several months. This is basically what I'm going to say. I mean, when you have that sloping down, it suggests that the that we're on average moving down towards that direction so what i really want to see is i want to see this thing flatten uh, but let's let's see what he says in his words uh, so the likelihood of mark cap revisiting it is not out of the question right yeah i mean because when you have a moving average going down that's what it that's directly what it implies that on average we're moving further down we're not done yet it's about the it's it's quite literally about the delta of the delta uh of of of, of the delta cap the delta slope you know being the slope essentially um touching touching delta cap on a lower low in the following month is still a likely possibility yeah I, I'd, I'd agree with that every penetration of mark cap in a delta cap should be best used as one component of a move of an average yeah and, and that's what i could say i mean you know if you're looking at this area I would be I would be combining it with the other with the other forms of technical analysis. I mean, this is not even technical analysis. This is this is this is like fundamental analysis, which is something that I typically don't really touch on. But it is quite interesting. I do, and I think that Willie Wu is a fucking. It's a very forward thinking guy um, who has a lot of very interesting things to say. But the fact that this is still you know coming down and guiding it down, I do not like. I want to see this guy flatten out at the very least, kind of what you saw over here. You know, kind of what you saw over here when it, when you when you had those very aggressive stabs down. When you have these when you have these more aggressive stabs down, I think it takes a little bit of time to actually show up. Let's go look at this guy, Bitcoin valuations. This is actually telling us the same thing. But I thought that there was something very interesting on this as well. Um, if you remember my long term analysis, uh, I do I, I I do basically or I have been saying, and I, this feels a little bit dirty, but I have been saying Bitcoin can get to 90,000, which I, I do believe. I actually do believe it's probably going to, if it is going to happen, it's going to take a long fucking time. Man. It's not like it's happening tomorrow or, or ne even next year or even the year after that, or maybe even in five years or 10 years or anything like that. But, uh, but I thought it was so fucking interesting that he actually came up with the same thing that I'm, that I'm saying, except different. Um, this this would be all the way at 90,000 nine, 90, ish area um but basically you know he's looking at the top cap is basically the average cap multiplied by by 35 remember just the average cap like the average mark cap essentially um which has historically gotten all the tops weirdly enough you just multiply it by uh, uh by 35 which again i <laughs> i think it's a little bit strange but hey if it works it works and we do have one two three four times i mean three touches makes a trend so we have four that's that's plenty 
my point is, is that uh, when I look at my long-term analysis, I actually have something that's quite similar. So I thought that that was, I thought that that was very, 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 very interesting. By the same, by the same token, the the low of this, the dotted trend line to the to the downside, has that called the uh, all the ultimate lows for Bitcoin? Actually, no, but it is showing a potential. Um, or what? Hold on, let's make sure that we're talking about the right thing first. Okay, we we're talking about the we want to get the. Um, it's not the top cap. It is the average cap. Yeah. Yeah. Average cap. Um, this is the forever moving average of mark cap. Right. Okay. So yeah, it's just a move. It's just moving average on mark cap. Um, Bitcoin doesn't have to touch it in order to put in a low, although it has in the past. That's a very good indication what it actually does. Uh, that would be all the way here, which would essentially be a price somewhere in the low 2000s actually on Bitcoin, which again, really matching up with something that I've been saying for quite some time. So I do think that's quite interesting. I did want to show that really, really quick. Um, let's go check out the other market leaders, the other the other top market caps. We got Mr. Buterall over here. Mr. Buterall, uh, same thing as Bitcoin actually, except you know da daily, daily Stokes is getting in this range, which has been calling the tops uh, for the last three drives in December. Actually, this, this range has been stopping it ever since uh, September, by the way. Uh, crossing down right around there, but we are poking our heads above this this hor this uh, diagonal trend line, which goes all the way back to 800s in uh, in May. You know, you remember this area. Uh, so again, if Mr. Butero breaks above this guy, if he actually confirms a daily doodle above this one, I, you know, yeah, I'd want to see the horizontal really taken out around 126. Yeah, about 126. But uh, hey, if that gets taken out, I mean. You got a, you got a lot of positive things here, except for the except for the daily stokes and the twelve hour stokes. You got you know ten simple across the upside of the yellow twenty one. I'm gonna guess that our weekly looks weekly is holding above the ten simple. Looks like it found support right here. I mean, there's some good things about this. Uh, weekly stokes are still uh, whoa hey weekly stokes are still coming down. Okay, that's that's concerning. That is very concerning. Um, I didn't check that beforehand. Uh, 12 hour, you know, 12 hour. I mean, I didn't make this chart under 12 hour, so it doesn't. So, so the fact that it actually did close above this this resistance trend line doesn't necessarily count. Um, but we do have 12 hour stokes also coming down as well. Again, I, I would always I would always default to D, to Bitcoin when in doubt. Uh, 12 hour jewel is. I mean, it gave the sell a while ago, so this is not necessarily. And this was not a perfect sell, so I wouldn't necessarily say that this is. You know, and it's yeah, it's it's not a perfect sell, especially after coming off of, of an area like this. Uh, RSI bouncing off the exponential you know, not really gain all that much from these indicators right now. We are resolving about three months of consolidation. And when looking at these indicators, it, you know, it's just giving you a very, 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 very small snapshot uh, when really we need something probably more, you know, we, we need to keep the whole picture in mind. But what I can say is, you know, the daily does interest me right now. Uh, again, going back to the daily, uh, that if this does actually break above 126, I I don't really see too much stopping it from 135. I mean, at that point, you know, if Bitcoin gets to 4,000, imagine that this guy gets back to about 145. Um, so again, let's go look at Mrs. Litecoin. Mrs. Litecoin having a nice reaction as well. You know, yeah, we did watch that Darth Maul dildo being put in um, yesterday, but uh, when you react like this, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to argue. I mean, yes, of course, I need to see this area actually getting taken out at 43 and a half, but so it's pretty fucking close, man. It's pretty fucking close. Um, if it does actually close that 12 hour above that area, 30, 30 uh, sorry, 43 and a half. Did I say that right? Did I say 34 and a half? I meant 43 and a half. Um, then probably gets a, a run at the prior highs. But again, higher time frames for this guy. Don't want to get too damn excited as, uh, you know, this, this area is of extreme importance. If you want to be more conservative, I would say fifty and a half dollars as long as Mrs. Litecoin's below fifty and a half dollars. It is, you know, it's still just a retest of um, uh, of the big breakdown leading to this more aggressive bear market. But if it can get above there, I mean, from a more traditional standpoint, I wouldn't have any reason to be bearish on this anymore. I I, I mean, just by the most by the most traditional standards. It, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be right it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be the proper diagnosis now of course it needs to prove itself beforehand it's got a lot of work to do still but i do want to offer that up that hey if it that that's the that's what's at stake right now if it does actually get back above that area that is significant humongously significant but same thing on litecoin as bitcoin and mr buterol you got daily stokes crossing down right here getting into the area that's kind of been stopping it for the last uh ever since september 12 hours same sort of thing you know uh getting all the tops from december january and now once again 
So, you know, looking at this, I mean, does it call another top leading, you know, leading to an actual breakdown? Uh, it could. I mean, but also at the same point in time, 12 hour golden cross is going to be on the way as long as it as long as it's above 30, 39 dollars. Uh, it will happen in like the next week or so. So keep that, keep an eye on that, keep an eye on that. Speaking of, I forgot to mention that Mr. Buterell, Mr. Buttersworth over here does have a four hour dildo golden cross, which has been active ever since uh, Feb 14th. And uh, this has had some pretty damn good uh, repercussions in Mr. Buterell's lives before. Uh, you got, you got the last one coming in at uh, December 25th, leading up to this run all the way to 163. Um, from essentially 120. So again, uh, this is of great importance right now. Great importance. Uh, I'm looking at this and uh, it is certainly, you know, it does make you think that, you know, if, if, if these guys are going to break up, then that probably means Bitcoin back to, uh, what is it, like 30, at least 39 or at least 30 at 50, 39, but maybe 4,000. Um, okay, cool. Do we want to look at gold? I do want to quickly show gold. I think I, I think I saw him breaking out last time I looked at him and I did want to quickly uh, cover this. Uh, let's go look at uh, gold. Yeah. So again, I've been, you know, it's, it feels dirty. I am, I am bullish on gold. I've been bullish on gold for a while. Um, but I don't want, I, but me being bullish and gold does not mean I expect it to actually break out above 12, uh, 1369. I think that there's nothing stopping it from 1369. This is a great reaction. You have closed above the horizontal resistance. You have all the oscillators working for you, or sorry, you do not have all the oscillators working for you. You got, you got weekly stokes still crossed up and getting into the more critical zone, but, uh, but those will stay up there if this one wants to trend, which I do believe it is Uh weekly, uh, jewel is, you know, it's, it's going to, it's, it doesn't stay here for too long typically. So I would be careful. Um, but overall, I think that it probably has enough juice to make, to make, to make its way somewhere into, into at least 1350, uh, to 1369, 1370, something like this is upper block territory, which I think it'll probably get rejected from. Um, you know, do, do I think it actually breaks out of this area? I don't really have a strong opinion on that. Uh, I think if it does, I think if it does, I mean, if it does in that, she probably have a very nice run to like 1460 14 uh, 1500 maybe maybe even um overall gold you know signaling some signaling some nice things but by the same token you got dixie over here on the other hand um hitting resistance and coming down off that but overall i wouldn't necessarily be bearish on dixie and that's what makes it difficult to be bullish on gold I think I'd be bearish on Dixie for the next couple of weeks, maybe while gold is getting towards there. But uh, but overall, uh, Dixie just seems like the it just seems like the rally that does not want to give up. Kind of like traditional markets, which we can go cover really really quickly, which actually closed on their highs again. This is why. This is why I've been saying, you know, if you wanted to make this week easy, easy for yourself, all you have to do is wait for 273, 273 and a half to be taken out, and then just get long. It's not financial advice, but not a financial advisor, but. <laughs> When you see an easy play, man, that's that's the fucking that's that's a textbook easy one. Uh, we will very likely get some very positive exponential movement average crosses uh, coming in next week. Weekly Stokes look fine. Weekly RSI looks fine. Weekly Jewel, not really anything of of crazy note right now. Um, going over the daily closing on your highs, that's really fucking good. Uh, yes, we do have resistance. Yes, we do have major resistance right around the 280, 281 ish area. If he gets there, it probably does sell off on first pass. But uh, but for now, looking good, man. Looking good. Again, I you know I like I think a lot of people are 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 holding their breath for a reversal. But uh, it's not appropriate from a technical analysis standpoint to actually be bearish on this, talking about a major reversal until you're back below 262. I mean, this guy, you know, and if he gets above 280, very very likely he gets back around prior highs around prior highs. Uh, if not, maybe even make some new highs, man. This, this has been an incredible rally. Uh, again, I'm speaking way out of turn with saying something like that. It's It's got a lot of work to do still. Um, but overall, you know, thing, things are kind of in the etchings right there. Okay, so we talked about Mrs. Lightcoin. We talked about Mr. Buterall. Let's go look at, uh, let's go look at uh, Mr. Ripple's nipples over here. Uh, again, still flailing around this area, putting in a nice uh, actual uh, Darth Maul, but the but the light side of Darth Maul over here yesterday. Long legged doji dildo, but still below all major movement averages. Um, you know, it's it's hard to have a strong opinion on this. The the RSI is kind of flailing around the, the 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 bearish control zone, right around the exponential, which is which is currently finding support around. But man, I I don't like the way that this chart looks. I don't like the Stokes uh, crossing down in this region as well, finding resistance in the same area that's kind of called the last tops. Um, so overall, you know, I would be I would be certainly hesitant on this. This is very corrective price action in nature. But in the lower time frames, we could do. Oh, I guess I. I guess I uh, got rid of all my 
well, I, I guess I guess all my uh, my drawing tools just went away. But in the very low time frames, you could make something like this, like a like symmetrical triangle. And if that actually does break out to the upside, you know, could we find a move all the way to? Oh, look at that! It just meet, meets up perfectly with the eighty nine to about thirty four cents. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, certainly possible. But again, remember, thirty four cents would just be this horizontal trend line. And as long as we're both, as long as we're below thirty four and a half cents, I'm actually overall bearish on this guy. Um, nothing, nothing has changed from a macro perspective as far as I'm concerned. As long as you're below thirty four and a half cents, you will be having the three day twenty one exponential coming in along the way. So there is no guarantee that if you even do break this one up to the upside, it's going to get there. It's going to make, it's going to fulfill that because remember a, a bullish thing the bearish market typically gets sold into typically look typically used for liquidity um okay have we spoken enough now have we covered everything that i wanted to say it's like yeah, have we covered everything that i want to say it's like great conversation crown great conversational skills just fucking talk at people and, <laughs> and ask them a question that they can't respond to sorry about that guys um uh, uh let's go check out what else can we check out we looked at gbdc we looked at that um, 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 we can go through the other alts really quickly. Uh, we got Monero over here. Monero actually, t actually nailing the top side of the resistance yesterday as well. Let's go to a, uh, let's go to a daily. Yeah, Monero not looking as healthy as the other ones. Um, so this would be a good counterpoint to the more immediate bear bullish case. Monero, Monero not looking as good. Daily Stokes crossing down. Also, I, I consider this uh, rejection of the 10 simple. Yeah, definitely relatively weak in comparison to the other ones that, that we looked at. Uh, let's go look at uh, Mr. Steller. Steller Lumens over here. Steller Lumens is actually kind of funny right now because um, if there's anything that I'd be looking for to have a little bit of a balance, it'd be Steller. Uh, Stellar, Stellar actually has some 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 things working for it. Uh, yes, you do have major resistance right at eight and a third cent, but uh, the second that you get above there, you can have a nice run up to uh, uh, mid nines. So keep that one in mind. Um, you know, yeah, you still do have your major support on our current lowest around you know low seven cent, but uh, there, there's a few more few more positive things on this one than than that that you don't see on the other ones. Uh, let's go get Neo Neo. Um, Neo looks, Neo actually looks like, I mean, it's the same formation as everything else, right? It's literally same formation of, as everything else. You know, still gar uh, uh, an, an incredibly garbage chart all the way through. Don't get me wrong, like this is a fucking god awful chart making lower lows, just like hit everything on my soundboard that, that signifies bad. Um, but this price action right here, is hinting at a very low time frame breakout, which could very easily send this guy back to about nine dollars. Um, however, daily Stokes crossing down. However, daily RSI just also in between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone, and we have our jewel getting very high as well, which this thing has not gotten this high ever since. I mean, April of 2018. And uh, let me remind you what happened in April of 2018. This was this high at eighty dollars. So again, um, I don't like that setup. That is not a signal from the jewel, but it's just kind of giving us a uh, context on historical price action. Uh, let's go look at uh, Bcash. What, what are we doing on Bcash? Bcash looks pretty weak, relatively speaking, below all major moving averages in the same, you know, descending triangle formation. Um, the second that it breaks, you know, it's, I mean, it's it's kind of resistance trend line to, to take out as 128 if it wants to have a little bit more bullish posturing, but it does not look like it. In fact, it's going to have the opposite cross that Bitcoin uh, currently has. Uh, Zcash, another garbage chart. Um, yeah, it is. It, it it did actually close below the daily 21 area to beat is 53 and a half. But this looks bad. I mean, daily Stokes also crossing down, everything crossing down um, daily RSI finding resistance initially off the uh, off the expansion, but overall bearish consolidation. Uh, if it does get another try at this, I'd, I'd imagine that 53 and a half probably does get sold. Jewel giving me the same thing, you know, basically, you know, at, in the same area that it was in December 25th high uh, as we just hit. Um, again, not necessarily a signal or anything like that. What about EOS? EOS, garbage, um, bad. As long as you're below three dollars, very fucking bad, very fucking bad. Although you do have some good crosses here, you do have some good crosses. But again, daily Stokes crossing down. Jewel giving you the, the exact same thing. You know, actually getting getting the highs right here, right here, and right here. Not with a signal, but just with getting the offset into that area. Um, those, you know, that tell that that has been telling it in the past that that is, you know. Basically, basically getting a little bit, uh, getting a little bit exhausted as far as that indicator is concerned. Have we covered all the uh, all the alts that I have on, on over here? Um, oh, Tron, yeah. Let's go look at Tron. Uh, Tron wants to come down. 
Tron look embarrassed to me. Uh, this is versus a dollar though, so keep that in mind. Um, but uh, but basically three drives, bearish divergence to the upside right over here, and coming back down. Yeah, I mean you might you, you know you might get another run at the 200 at uh, 2.6 cents, but um, overall the macro direction likely coming back down. Yeah, weekly Stokes just crossed to the downside as well. Weekly going to potentially uh, give a go at the 21. So that would be very nasty if we actually did lose that. But yeah. All right, let's go back to Bitcoin, wrap them up, and uh, then I'll leave you off till later. Actually, I'll actually upload another uh, psychology vid um, later tonight at uh, 5.30 my time, um, and I'll be uploading those videos every uh, every Saturday from now on. So, yeah, uh, Bitcoin, again, nothing's changed. Lower time frames, uh, the area to beat for the bears in the more mi in the more immediate time frames is 35.30. That doesn't necess necessarily change around the picture. You would have support around 34.85. I think that, that you know, you'd probably have a little bit of a bounce there, but probably ultimately do find your support at around 33.50. That is a big area to beat for the bears. As long as you're above 3350, talking about these major, you know, bear zuka targets of mid 2000s or may, or even lower is is not really appropriate. By the same token, uh, place to beat for the bulls is 3650, uh, 3700. If you can actually take that area out, then very little stopping you from about uh, 3850, 3900. And then my opinion is you probably get to 4000 at that point in time. Test the 200 exponential on the weekly. Um, maybe even higher, you know, maybe even higher. But for now, that's going to do it for now. Hope that you enjoyed this one. Hope that you are having a beautiful uh, Saturday. Hope you're having the best Saturday possible. It's actually sunny here right now, so fair enough. Hopefully hopefully it's sunny in your part of the world as well. Soak up that sun, baby. Get that vitamin D, but not in that dirty, you know, XXX videos way, but just in like the more healthy way. So again, guys, always wish you well, and uh, I'll be signing off now. So take care and see you soon.